Well, good afternoon, children. Or good morning, or good evening, depending on what time of day you're watching this with us. And welcome back to our Catechism series. We haven't done this for a few weeks now, partly because I enjoyed my tropical island trip just a little bit too much in the last video. But I can promise you that now the whole team is back and we're going to be with you again each week helping you to learn the New City Catechism. What an adventure it's been already! How have you been getting on? Can you believe we already looked at eight questions together? With it having been a while, why don't we start off by briefly rehearsing the last three questions? If you can remember them, do join in and say them with me, starting with question six. Question six. How can we glorify God by loving him and by obeying his commands and laws? Question seven. What does the law of God require? That we love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and love our neighbour as ourselves. Question eight. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honour your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. Well, that last one was certainly the longest and maybe the hardest we've tried to learn so far. But do you remember the special actions we showed you last time to help you learn it with us? To learn the answer to that question? Let's have a quick reminder of those actions. The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. The second commandment is, you shall not make for yourself an idol. The third commandment is, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The fifth commandment is, honour your father and mother. The sixth commandment is, you shall not murder. The seventh commandment is, you shall not commit adultery. The Eighth Commandment is, you shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Four is not five. The Tenth Commandment is, you shall not covet. I hope those actions have been helping you as you've been practising learning all Ten Commandments. But perhaps even as you've been trying to memorise them, you've been asking yourself or your parents, what do they all mean? What does you shall not covet mean? What is an idol and why shouldn't we have them? Well, I have some good news for you today. The next four questions in the Catechism, beginning with today's question, are going to explore in more detail what each of the commandments actually means. In today's question, we're going to explore the first, second and third commandments. Now, some of the keen-eyed amongst you may have noticed that I'm in a different location to normal. That's right, I'm not at the office today. I was relaxing at home just before I came on here with you. And so I thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour of my house. And maybe we'll do each of these questions from a different room in my home. Anyway... First of all, let's hear the new question and answer. Question nine. What does God require in the first, second and third commandments? Answer. First, that we know God as the only true God. Second, that we avoid all idolatry. Third, that we treat God's name with fear and reverence. Now, let's explore each of those in turn. Are you ready? 
What does God require in the first, second and third commandments? First, that we know God as the only true God. The first commandment reminds us that there is only one true God, the God of the Bible, and that we are to love, know and worship him as the only God there is. And many people throughout human history have worshipped other gods. That's gods with a little g. The Canaanites worshipped Baal. The Greeks worshipped gods like Artemis and Zeus. Hindus worshipped and still worship Shiva. Buddhists worship Buddha. But none of these gods are real gods. They're just gods that people have made up and imagined for themselves. Now, we might say to ourselves, well, that's OK then, because I don't believe in any of those gods. Oh, no, I don't worship those gods. But the Bible also tells us that we can be tempted to make gods out of all sorts of everyday things. Maybe we make Lego into a god, or money, or popularity, or food, or football, or bow ties. Oh, how I love my bow ties. Often during my afternoon naps, I find myself dreaming of having more and more and more bow ties. But that's the problem. All these things, Lego, food, football, bow ties, they're all good things for us to enjoy. But when we want them too much, when we make them into the most important thing in our lives, when we put our trust in them to make us truly happy, then we have made them into little gods. But in the first commandment, God tells us that he is the only true God and he wants us to know him as the only true God. Because he knows if we seek ultimate happiness and security in any other place, it will ultimately disappoint and separate us from the joy and the happiness that can only be found in knowing him. That's what the first commandment is all about. It's all about who we worship. The next commandment, the second one, is about how we worship. What God requires in the second commandment is that we avoid all idolatry. Here God tells us that he doesn't want us making statues or images of him and then worshipping them instead of him. That's why, unlike in a lot of other religions, Christians don't have statues of God in their homes. And the reason for that is very simple. When we try and make a statue or image of God, we use our imaginations to make God the way we would like him to be, rather than the way he really is. Often, to be honest, we end up making him a lot like ourselves, rather like this portrait that I drew earlier of me. Uh, it's a rather good picture, I think, but it'd be a terrible picture of God if God just looked like me. The truth is, even if we try our very best, we could never make an accurate picture of God using a painting or a statue, because God can't be reduced to a lump of stone or a coloured canvas. He's God, the creator of every stone and every colour. And however good our imagination is, we'll ultimately end up leaving things out that we don't like or adding things in that aren't true. Maybe we don't like the idea that God is perfectly holy, that he takes sin seriously. And so we would leave that out of what we picture in our imaginations when we think about God. Or maybe we don't like the idea that he's in control of all things. And so we leave that out of our thinking when we think about God. The truth is, when we do that, we're no longer worshipping the true God at all. We're no longer thinking about him. We're 
worshipping an idol, just as much as if we'd made a statue and bowed down to it in our living rooms. So, how can we know and see what God is really like? Ah, well, well, that's easy. We can know God in the place that God has chosen to reveal himself to us, in the Bible. We don't need to guess or imagine what God is like, because he has revealed himself to us perfectly in the Bible and in all that it tells us about Jesus, his son. And let me tell you from someone who's already been around a long while and seen a lot of things in the world, there is nothing that possibly compares to seeing and knowing God as he has revealed himself in the pages of the Bible. Well, I'd give up every other good thing, even my bow ties, if I had to, but I would never give up my Bible because it's there that God reveals himself to us every single day. That's what the second commandment is all about. It's about how we worship God. Finally, the third commandment, our last one for today, is all about how we speak about God. The third commandment tells us that we should treat God's name with fear and reverence. Here, God wants us to be people who protect his name and reputation. People who can show other people what God is really like. When God revealed his name to his people in the Old Testament, he was revealing his character to them. He was telling them what he was really like. That he is holy and just, loving and kind, gracious and merciful. God's name sums up who he is, and therefore it ought to be treated as precious, especially by those who love him. Which means we must be careful not to misuse his name, to use it to suggest in any way that he's anything less than awesome and amazing and full of truth and goodness. We mustn't use his name then as a swear word, or even just as a way of showing surprise or frustration, like when someone says, oh my God. No, that's not treating God's name with fear and reverence. It's like taking his name and dragging it through the dirt. Can you imagine someone taking their most precious toy or teddy bear, like my beloved fluffy bear, and just kicking it around carelessly in a filthy, dirty street? Of course you can't. We guard and honour what is precious to us. Don't we, Fluffy Bear? Yes. Well, how much more then should we guard and honour the name and character of God? Whenever we use God's name, it should reveal to other people that we treasure him, that we love and adore him. It should show other people that the God whose name we're using is so very good. It should encourage them to want to know the one true God for themselves. And there we have it, the first three commandments and what they mean. I hope that's been helpful to you. What's that, Fluffy Bear? Oh, it's been helpful to you, is it? Oh, good. Well, thank you for joining us. I should have brought you in earlier. Anyway, why don't we practice saying the question and answer together once through now, and then I shall leave you with this week's catechism song. Here we go, then. Say this with me. What does God require in the first, second and third commandments? First, that we know God as the only true God. Second, that we avoid all idolatry. Third, that we treat God's name with fear and reverence. Very good. I hope you have fun trying to learn that this week. And I will see you next week. Well, maybe Fluffy Bear as well where we'll take some more time to practice it together. Until next week then, my friends. Pip-pip. Bye-bye. <laughs>